Gordon. Hey, y'all. Shane Rice here with Javi. Um, we're talking about uh, how do we know what pages are valuable on GitLab? And so I'm going to share my screen, just walk through Google Analytics and uh, show Javi how I do this. All right, great. So that right, sounds great. Um, Javi, here's what we look at, right? So you have, you know, all your page, page views, all that stuff. Page value, though. Okay, so this is this is the magic that I do. So because we don't really have a, a really great way to associate like actual revenue value with a page visit, uh, just because our funnels don't connect all the way through. And so we don't really, we can't really see that accurate, right? So instead of leaving this value as zero, what I did was anytime someone takes an action that's an event on a page, that value is one. And so every person that visits that page, if a hundred, you know, hundred percent of the people that visit that page, the page value is one. But if like, say, you know, 1% of the people that visit that page take an action that we want them to take, then the page value is a penny. So it's 1%, right? So it, I can't really change the, the dollar here. So we just have to kind of take that out of our mind and, and realize this is percent, right? So what percent of people actually interact with the elements that we want? And so you can see here, you know, like, so the homepage, right? Like it's, it's got a value of one. What that means is that out of the hundred, you know, say for every hundred people that visit, 1% of those people are clicking on a CTA of some kind, free trial, demo, whatever, right? And then, so, but when you get into pages that are, that have forms on them, that page value, then that one goes to not just a CTA, but to the form itself. So if they fill out the form and submit it, that event has a value of one too. So if you click on page value and it'll sort, should sort from, yeah, uh, ascending uh, or descending, sorry. So look, you know, this is not helpful, right? Like this, somehow this page has got a value of 200. Um, so let's, let's solve for that. So um, we go to page views, dimensions, uh, no, com site usage is what we need. So let's say um, page views greater than, 100. All right. So we'll get all these paid campaigns that lots of people convert on, but that we can't really aggregate. Okay. So now we see, okay. So look at this DevSec uh, ops demo, right? Whatever campaign we're running that is super successful. 47% of the people are completing that form. Right. And then um, you do that, you know, on the free trial, right? Like, so what that means. And so again, the context here is a little strange for us because of how our requirements are set up. Um, we can't see what people are doing in the app yet. So we just count that conversion when somebody clicks on that free trial SaaS CTA. We count that as that one on that page. So 35, 34% of the people are either clicking on to the SaaS trial or clicking on to the self-managed trial. And when you get to the self-managed trial, 23% of the people are completing the trial form, right? Now, little caveat there, you went and looked at the data, you'd probably find that 25, like 23% of the people that includes people that click on another CTA. The only other CTA I can really think of on that page is the free trial button at the top, which would just take them back to the pages around before. So I don't think that's a very happening very often. I think it's closer to like the full 23% of people complete that. So anyway, so you can go through the you know, entire website and you can look at, you know, sections of the site if you wanted to. So let's say you didn't just want to see, you know, the, the highest page value. You want to see what's going on with topics, right? So let's get rid of that. And let's just say, all right, so show me topics. Oh, that's not going to work. That's really interesting the way you set that up. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it's really just like a really simple, like I was looking at one and I was like, you know what? This would be valuable, uh, but it's, it's, yeah. it's a total hack. Uh, not the way it's I mean, there's power. There's power to simplicity though. That's true. That's true. So yeah, so this is cool, right? So you, you look at this page. Um, this You can't click to th through to this. So let's copy this. And the reason why, let me show you what happens if you click through to like try to launch gotcha. this page. Um, and you can't see it here, but let me add it to the window so you can see it. The, the URL just gets mangled because of the Google Tag Manager filter settings we use. It applies that to the um, to the URL when you click to go to it. What's going on here? We move this. Oh, hold on. I know why. Uh, there we go. No. Oh. Okay, hold on. Let's see. How and why? Maybe that page got pulled. Yeah, I guess that page got pulled. Uh. 
Uh-huh. Um, interesting. Oh, that's yeah. Look, only four. So maybe the page isn't even live yet, right? So I should have looked at the page. Interesting. Let's look. Let's go back <laughs> one step. Yeah. So when you look at this one, right? Like so. 7% of the people on this page are taking that CTA step, right? Because okay. um, I don't think on these pages, I don't think there's anything that is a direct uh, action, like a direct form. So let's let's go to this page and let's see what happens. See what the CTA is. Yep, so concurrent DevOps white paper. That's the, the main CTA, learn more is another CTA there, taking them to product. Um, and then we can also, if we go, let's see, we can go to events. So let's go to events. And we can actually see what CTAs people are clicking. So once we've identified a ha- high value page, then we can go to an event and then or we can go to events, look at CTAs, single out that page to see exactly what people are clicking. on. So we go to CTA. And then event label. So the event label here is the page that the event occurs on, right? The CTA event. So if we copy and paste this in. All right. And then if we say, all right, so seven, seven total events. Now let's go um, click text. And we can see what people clicked on. So everybody's clicking oh, on the download, interesting. download concurrent web, DevOps white paper. And so you can do that. So the other thing you can do with events, you'll probably like this, is let's go back to category. You can go to navigation. And you can see, okay, so main navigation header, what are people clicking on there? And the event label. So you can see like, okay, so almost 90% of the people are clicking on sign in. Um, you know, f- about 5% are on pricing, another, you know, two and a half are on install and you can get all the way down there and you can look at this on specific pages. So you could say, okay, so, um, page. Like how there's a local build one, the 127.0.0.1. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Um, so you can even, so like you can split this out to say, okay, so, you know, most of the people that are clicking on sign in or on the homepage, people that are on pricing coming from the homepage. So it just breaks it out even further, more granular, granularly. Um, and then, so CTA is super helpful. Navigation is super helpful, especially as you start thinking about IA and those kind of things. Um, that also, navigation also has footer and other stuff, but you know, it's a very small number of people when you get past the, the main nav. Um, so no, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what you would expect, right? Uh, let's see, uh, forms. Oh, we have YouTube and Vimeo. So if you want to see what's happening with specific videos on a page, you can go click in here and it'll show you, you know, um, progress, how far into the video people went. Um, and then, uh, let's see forms. So you can go to forms and then what you see here is it's submit is the, is the action, but these are all the different, uh, form, uh, events over the la- the time period you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So resources, that means somebody requested that DevOps white paper or some similar resource, uh, trial. That means they filled out the form for the trial, uh, demo, same thing, filled out the form for demo webcast, same thing. Something's going on with this. I need to figure out why this is. So there should be a value here. Um, so we probably changed a, um, because the way this works is in Google here, let me stop sharing my screen so I can talk about this. Oh, it's over here. All right, great. So the way to think about this in Google Tag Manager is we are hard coding a lot of these values in place. So for example, um, because our form events don't bubble up like a traditional form because they're Marketo forms is something weird with them. Um, I added custom events on submit so that when somebody submits that custom event, it will trigger a unique event for resources, for trial, for demo. And then that way we can identify which form is being filled out and quickly see, okay, you know, how many people are filling out for the resources, how many people are filling out for the trial. So it just gives us um, a a quick view into this without having to look at specific pages. 
Um, but sometimes if we change something on the website, it can throw off what Google Tag Manager is tracking. And that's when you get like these values that you used to have are now replaced by that catch all of GTM dash link click. I don't know what that is. So I've got to get the uh, empirical path team to help me figure out what we changed and then either change it in the code or change it in Google Tag Manager so it matches what's in the code now. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think some of that just happens um, just because we're not sure like what the things are doing, uh, especially as code has changed throughout the years. Uh, I've yeah. noticed that like, especially as I think as the digital experience team has gone in and, and changed some of the pages uh, in marketing, one of the classes in one of the class names that is very popular, like the CTA button, for instance, is not being is used at all anymore. So it's just, it's being used essentially for Google Tag Manager to yeah. it up essentially. Uh, so it's like, it's going through that process of just educating people about like what that stuff does. Um, I think on our end, that's like something that our team could improve on, to be honest. So it's just like trying to get through those those hurdles and trying to figure out like what is it that we need to do to make sure that we have as best data as we can. Uh, yeah. I think this conversation really started out of us trying to derive what to work on, uh, especially when everyone is telling you that something is a priority it's like okay well how do you make sense of all of the things that are happening when there's so many pages it's easy yeah. to get down the rabbit hole of like what do you work on next so yeah i thought that i thought that's why i would ask you that uh i sent you a direct message just asking you like hey like my manager michael just asked me like what this means so i thought it would be interesting to see what, what you had in mind and that was actually really really helpful so thanks for sharing that yeah, of course. And I think, you know, uh, as you get further into slippers and into the design system, I think, um, you know, once we're at a place where it's mature and, and we're, you know, like um, confident that, you know, we, we, we have stable values there, I think we can start cleaning up the tag uh, container as well eventually so that we can get rid of that CTA button. So it's used, you know, we use a class that actually, you know, is part of slippers and then we can drop that slowly from the website. We can kind of slowly migrate away from those as, as you roll that out. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, we're working on that. It's getting, yeah, it's no, it's great. Out. No, you're, it, the, <laughs> I'm super impressed with the work that's been done so far and, and happy to help, you know, uh, move that forward however I can. So, um, cool. Yeah, no, this has been great. Thank you so much. Yeah.